tie it into the thing. That's fine. But I've been doing this for a long time, since 74. Oh, yeah. And not just doing it, we've become, I would think we're one of the leaders in assembled vehicles, uh, manufactured in the country. Been building street rods, doing. Yep. We've been an advocate for the industry quite a long time. We really pursued, there was a lot of issues with the titling. We worked with SEMA, we did a lot of lobbying. We can, when you're done with your car, you will get an Arkansas title. Yep. He calls it a 1927 Ford replica. Or we could supply with the MSO, which would title it the 2017 in your state, however you want to do it. Yep. But we are a car manufacturer, we have a world manufacturer identifier number. Politic, politic, politic. Now, a big issue, you're going to have a lot of money in this car. Oh, yeah. And I tried to sell it for you, but after I thought about it, oh. I tried to sell it for not even pennies oh, on the dollar. Yeah, you was like, that was starting no, so low. I'm like, what are you doing? So I when you see this car, make them an offer, but it will be viable. But it will be more than what I said before, a lot, because it's, a it's lot. coming together nice. But if somebody takes your car, surely you want to get paid what you've got in it at least. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So as an advocate for our industry, I've got to do this. I just got to do this. You this, is, do this is the Black Knight versus insurance fraud and Bob O'Leary. You know who Bob O'Leary is? Bob O'Leary. I believe he's the president of. He's the president of Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Insurance, insurance Company. They had an investigator here yesterday who actually tried to start accusing us of insurance fraud. And uh, some of you have Grundy. A lot of us. Do you know the story about Grundy? Mm -hmm. Here, let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. I better have my notes because just before 11.05 called, I got to the level I wanted to talk to and left a voicemail, and I got a call from their attorney. Like five minutes. Well, you heard me. Yeah. No, so right. if, if I stroke out and have you a heart fired. attack. He was fired up. because my... He is fired yeah. up. So their attorney called me to explain the situation. But let me explain it to you. Here, here we go. And, and I brought this over just because sometimes you got to have a soapbox, right? Yeah. So if you have Grundy insurance, if you know anything about Grundy, I researched it last night. Grundy, Jim Grundy, a senior, came home from World War II. Uh, the Japanese bomb broke Pearl Harbor and dragged us into this. So he came home and there was a GI Bill that had some money. And his father-in-law uh, had a company, a scrap metal company, and he seen an old, I think a Pierce Arrow or a, uh, one of the nice old cars that was just an old car then being scrapped. And he went ahead and restored it. He was really one of the first people that started preservation restorations. So his son-in-law, Jim Grundy, wanted to start insurance, and he, he said, all right, you can insure my business, but you got to figure out a way to insure these cars uh, reasonably. And um, you buy a brand new car, it depreciates over time, and it's worth less, but it, that car was not depreciating. He knew that that car would appreciate in value, so Grundy advertises stated value. You pay agreed. per thousand, agreed price on the car. Uh, so if it's twenty thousand, it's twenty thousand. You pay premiums based on a twenty thousand dollar car. It doesn't depreciate it. It's fifty five thousand dollars. It's a fifty five thousand dollar car. There's an agreement made, and there's it goes on. In January, so this is Jim Grundy did that, and it's gone on, and it was a great company. It helped the the, the hobby and the industry, and it went on. And uh, I think, and I'm not exactly sure on the thing, but really, um, your agent. And the people that really insure your car, the underwriters, are different people. Underwriters, what they are is they're gamblers. They're big time gamblers. And it's it's just like going to Vegas. Um, if we go to Vegas, it's not like going to Vegas. Because if we go to Vegas, there is a chance we could come a home winner. But the house always wins. The house always wins. Now when you deal with underwriters, it's a more of a rigged game. And uh, oh, Bob O'Leary, we mentioned him. He's like the head of the family at the Philadelphia. So the best you can do on the insurance gambling game is break even. If you lose everything you got, maybe they'll pay you back for it. But they got the numbers figured out. They win. They win. They will win. They will always win. So it's like gambling with the mafia. You're going to lose or maybe break even. So we have a family boss there. 
I think Mr. Grundy Sr., I believe he's no longer with us. He was a World War II veteran. His son ran it. And uh, what I know about that family and the family name, they were great for the industry. Philadelphia Insurance Company, the underwriters, to Grundy, which is owned by a Japanese company. And I would do them to dishonor mispronouncing their name, but they're not even worth mentioning their name. But I assure you, and if you want to look it up, I'm sure you can find it, Philadelphia Insurance Company is owned by a fully owned subsidiary of a Japanese company. So Mr. Grundy got drawn into the war because the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And now here we're buying Grundy Insurance Company, and they're throwing a big stink bomb into our hobby and our industry. So we had this guy, this this... Darren Matthews comes in here, some snot-nosed punk kid, investigator. First thing I did, I knew, I knew the story. Um, we talked about it. I, I'm, should I say his name? Not Eddie. You know Eddie. Eddie. It's not Eddie from here, but it's Eddie. Right. On January 28th, his car was stolen. It was really nice. It was a 27, I'm sorry, it was a, 20, a 23 turtle deck. And he just... 75 year old man that that was his car that was a dream car he put everything into it for years and years kept improving it you know how it is when you're, you're trophy hunting sometimes you got to get a little better than the next one and he had a nice car he come in red faced spitting BBs mad somebody violated it somebody stole his car and thanks to the industry and you folks out there we made a post of the car put an APP on it and it was shared all over the place this is January 28th about two months later, the same man is coming here being jacked around by Grundy Insurance, Grundy Insurance's adjuster, Grundy Insurance's investigator now, Mr. Gerald Crook. No, it's, I gotta make sure I got the right, Darren Matthews. So, accusing him of fraud, accusing him of overinsuring his car. I asked Eddie, because I had to, I said, Eddie, did you steal your car? And he looked at me like, well, there's no, no, I didn't steal my car. I said, okay, you insured your car for X amount. It's worth X amount. You don't need estimates from us. You don't need everything from us. Well, this guy comes in here yesterday. I came. I showed him around the shop first. I said, here, do you go to a new car showroom, buy a brand new car. They look like this. Stand 10 feet back. We're going to talk about your car in a second, the Black Knight. They're going to look very similar. But this car over here costs three times as much to build as this one because of the details. You don't know Jack. I showed him into my office. I explained to him thoroughly. Did I explain to him thoroughly enough there, Stephanie? I think it was pretty thoroughly. It was pretty thoroughly? Oh, yeah. Now, it could have been on reality TV. We could have had, like, the top rating show there. Probably. But you weren't on it. You should have grabbed your camera or you should have calmed me down so I don't stroke out. That means it's your job. And you didn't do either, so we don't have video or nothing. <laughs> so anyway... I sent him packing, went up the ladder, researched Grundy, did all that. It's really, it's a Chinese face. <laughs> it's an American face on a Chinese company that yeah, does not want to pay their bills. Yeah. The only fraud, the only fraud we're talking about here, Mr. was O'Leary, O.P. O'Leary of, of Philadelphia. Bob, is it Bob O'Leary? What's his name? Bob O'Leary. Bob O'Leary, I'd like to talk to you sometime. And I'm a pretty persistent guy. I bet at some point we'll connect. I will figure out how to at least communicate with you in a way that you'll have to ignore me. So, Mr. O'Leary, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're really trying to do. If you have been scammed by grading on a stated value, if, you, if your insurance, because the end of this story for Eddie, who has now come here, and he was like, like a child, a 75 year old man, like a child in the fetal position, wanting to cry. I just talked to him on the phone earlier today. He said it's taken years off of his not that many years left life stressing over this. He's hired an attorney. $55,000 stated value insurance that he's paid for 10 years, they offered him $30,000. So, Mr. Bob O'Leary, be very O'Leary of Grundy. And as I research it all, read the fine print on all the... I have a question. Why would you offer somebody $30,000 if that was $50,000? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I didn't give the lawyer much time to speak when she, when she talked to me, but then bring me to court, I'll calm down, I can answer my questions good. So that being said, this car is so far over the top. If you tell somebody what it's worth that doesn't know cars, they're going to go, whoo! Right. Do you have a bolt? Yeah, I have one right here. Okay, you got one there. Oh, you don't have a nasty bolt. Do you have, a, do you have an old yeah, nasty bolt? Sure. Okay, let's get a nasty bolt. I don't know if we're going to see this on here. But you can get a nasty bolt for a couple cents. I think Orson's got it. You can buy them by the pound, $1.99 well, a pound. not that size. but Not this. Well, yeah, right. but add it up. And then, and anymore, Chinese are making a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Don't believe the grades. You know, it used to be these marks on here. There's some a bit of marks on there. That would tell you the grade of the bolt. Do not believe that anymore. Do not believe, believe grades on steel. The standards in the industry have gone. There is no integrity anymore right. in the world. And we're not perfect. Spirit Industries has made mistakes. All I can say is we have done our best always when somebody's not been satisfied to make them happen. We've gone above and beyond and spent more than a, just a try. So we're not perfect by any stretch. Don't, don't take us like holier than thou. But that gummit, if it's supposed to be a grade eight bolt and you mark it a grade eight bolt, make it a grade eight. Make bolt. it a grade eight bolt. But then we can go to nicer bolts, and then we can go to this. That's a chrome bolt, right? This is a chrome bolt. So what is that? Yeah. A couple dollar bolt, three dollar, six dollar bolt. This bolt here is seven dollars. Seven dollar bolt. So you got a seven dollar bolt before it's engraved. Well, yeah, and that's not a stainless polished one. No, and then that's not a really big one. I mean, this no, one's bigger. That's so you a little pay. bigger, right? No, that's a little bigger. Can you see into this? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I tip it like this. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Go back up a little bit. Uh, a little further down. Like a little bit. Right there. You can see that? Yep. Do you see the black knight there? Mm-hmm. We're not even going to say how much it costs if a black knight well, no, right. of, your, of your bolt. Right. But that's the kind of details that we're all going into, some of us. Some of us just admire it. Yesterday's uh, quote was talking about appreciating other people's work right. not being envious of it and stuff yeah, appreciate it. appreciate it yeah this this came out really cool if you watch the the video of doing it this is all laser etched yeah and uh, Chris my son-in-law did it and it's not just like almost you didn't take one one jousting night and flip it over to have no, 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 two jousting nights you got two different distinct yep. jousting nights with different and even down to, you're jousting your wife. Yep. Is she going to appreciate that? Well, she didn't. She said, we don't ever fight. I said, well, we are, we are <laughs> on the it's car. Sport. It's <laughs> sport. It's not fighting. It's sport. Right. It's, it's all good sport. <laughs> it, and it's like when we, when we compete against each other at a car show. We're not fighting. We're not right. arguing. We're not. Well, we're looking for those little things that sets our car apart from the other cars. Exactly. And we have to do what it takes what to do that. Takes. And that takes money. <clears throat> To make that happen. Well, it takes, it and it takes, takes thought. time. It takes thought to start with. Right. You want. And it also takes time. So is our time valued at anything? Well, Grundy doesn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, the question. By the way, this is a, sponsored by SpiritCars.com, not Grundy. The compressor's on it. We got to turn oh, it on. Darn it. So we'll talk over it. It'll be loud for a moment. But show us, just show us some of the cool stuff out there. I'll get the compressor. Okay. I don't know what we're looking for. How about right over here we've got this uh, motor mount cover. Can you zoom in on that? That's the black knight and it, and it shows the black knight there. Also right here you saw these, I believe, your your valve cover breathers. We have the black knight in there and it, I don't know if you can zoom in on those T-bars or not. Probably kind of hard to see that, but each one of these T-bars has a head, and it's facing forward, and they're actually mirrored on the other side. So all of the all of the heads are facing forward in the, in the correct orientation. All the, the braided hose work is beautiful. Work. Yeah, I mean this even this this throttle bracket here is a this is a high dollar throttle bracket. This isn't something that you just Go get this hundred dollar bracket right here, one piece. Bill it, you know. All the we've been talking. Larry, Larry comes, comes down about once, twice a month. 
Yeah, about my, twice my a kids month. were over last that night here at the month. house. And oh, hi, Larry. Larry, you're home. <laughs> I actually made him work on it, helped me put some lattice up last Yeah, I helped so we're, him out working in the yard. As we go along here, we're, we've been talking about it. We got to change these out. Right. I mean, there's a they're there's not going to work. Aluminum head, the kingpin. King pin, just, so we can. So every time you make something nicer, whatever the next thing next to it, right, it like starts now it these, shows out. Now these twelve point nuts are starting to not look. Good enough, so <laughs> they're gonna have to be addressed. He, and that's just he looks at me and says, What do you think? I was like, You're the one that's got to make the stopping point here, and so. that's just that's that's what happens. I mean, we had the originally we had the the cat plated shackles in here, now we're going to a chrome shackle in the spring, so just uh, trying to get that detail. Hey, Corey, right. cap, you want a cap on some where are you gonna put those? You want to cap one of the nuts? Acorn nuts. Um, I, I've kind of gone away from that. I was going to originally do that, but I've kind of gone away from that because I went to a nylon and I'm just getting the exact right bolt and it ends at the nylon. So, so but you got chrome washers, chrome nylon. And sometimes if you have a painted bolt, you may have to tighten your bolt down, mask it off, sand it, and paint the bolt after the pack because you put a wrench on it, you're going to scuff right. the paint. It depends what level you want to go to. We've got some stainless bolts in here, but when we get to the suspension, we don't really want to use stainless bolts. They're a little too brittle for that. So, the, I mean, the details, I'm just enjoying watching this car come together. And, uh, I think you're having a good time building it up. Oh, home. absolutely. And yeah. When it's done, it's... Absolutely. You know, you know you're going to the next level when you're at the jeweler. And the jeweler's polishing and your the jeweler's stuff. Polishing and the jeweler's your doing polished your, doing stuff. Your stuff. So absolutely, this is a this is a pretty cool car. And no, I, just just as an advice, I mean, buyer beware in everything. Whether you choose your body shop, whether you choose your builder, whether you choose your insurance company. I guess read the fine print if you can. If it, and if it's somebody that's so concerned about fine print. I've always been worried about somebody that's worried about getting something stolen from them. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it's usually the person you got to look out for. But nonetheless, we're, our culture is going way past the handshake being a bond. And, I mean, so integrity seems to be something that maybe but in the you, past, maybe you, it was bad you, back then. Maybe you know memories are better than they really are. But you know, uh, it's just it's, I feel so bad for with my customers. Well, if you have an agreed value, I mean, if, if I have, you know, if I insure this and I have an agreed value, then I expect that that's, we agreed on that. That's the, that's the price I paid the premium for. That's what I expect to receive. Yeah. If I, and I'm already traumatized enough because I've lost that, that thing I've worked so hard on, mm -hmm. and now you're going to put me through more. Why would you do that? Yeah. For corporate, Why are for you doing corporate that greed for? and corporate profit is, is the bottom line. So, and, and sincerely, we are not for any financial gain of a, on, on our part. Uh, we are helping to organize. If there are enough people, and, and having this seen this happen and heard stories now, there are many people out there. And if you know somebody that's happened to that has had a stated value insurance policy, and the insurance company came back and started intimidating you with, and I'm, I'm hearing stories of, well, you drove it a couple miles too many, or you did this, or you didn't fulfill that, or you did that. They put you on the defensive immediately, and then they're going to negotiate a settlement with you. If you paid for $55,000 of insurance on a vehicle, and they're offering you $30,000 for that, don't let them intimidate you. We are working to put together a class action suit. If you've been involved with that, again, we have no financial stand in the gaining of it. Our position here is to support the industry, to advocate for this is not a huge program, but people watch it. Right. So let us know. Tell your and friends. Share it. And share it. Make, yeah. Make share sure. this video on uh, Philadelphia Insurance. They've got a Facebook page. Share this video on uh, uh, Grundy Insurance and the Japanese company. Who cares about them? They probably don't even speak English anyway. They just spend our American dollars and give us nothing. So, not to be soda man. I love you. <laughs> a Japanese friend of mine that helped name Sarah. Oh, okay. This is about corporate greed. This isn't about nationality. Right. It's, right. it's just how ironic that what helped <laughs> the GI Bill that helped get 
get Grundy started, now a Japanese company owns it. Owns it. It's just, yeah. it's just crazy to me. That is crazy. So we better read something. Surely Ernie's got something positive in the book. Yeah, I'm sure he does. You're going to miss it. You're not going to be here. Your wife said you got to be home Saturday. We're having a party. Yeah. Tomorrow. I think the hot rod man's going to be yeah. there. Yeah, we do. Oh, that's exciting. So you're going to pick one for us. Wow, I am. You may not be able to convert others to better way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> start again. Yeah. <laughs> We're here to get. You want me to start over? You might need to get on the soapbox. Well, no, no. I, I just, just do it. We'll run, it. We'll run along. Okay, it, go ahead. Honestly, go ahead. You may not be able to convert others to a better way of thinking, but being a positive influence and a good role model is a good start. <laughs> All right. I'm, honestly, we try our best. We are not perfect. Don't take anything I've said in that context. Uh, and if, if you have a problem with us, please call us first. Let us try to remedy it before you start trash talking us. Now take this video and share it everywhere you can until Grundy settles their claim with Eddie and this poor man can have some... Right. In the twilight of his life, he's he got did. to deal he with did. it. He did lose his car after all. And his I mean, car is gone. gone. They never recovered it. Right. So, so. till tomorrow, we'll see you guys.